Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Swuss. Continuing on college football week four. Got a Big 12 battle here. Kansas, West Virginia in Morgantown. Let's go. Welcome to The Swuss. The Swuss. Hey, get the sewers. All right, like I said, Jayhawks are in Morgantown for this one. West Virginia laying two and a half points at home here. Total sitting at 56 or 56 and a half, depending on your sports book. Let's take a look at the pie charts. And according to this data that I don't trust, Accent's coming in on West Virginia. Over 60% of the tickets, about 60% of the money on the Mountaineers uh, at the time of recording. So let's get into this one, and we'll start with the fact that both of these teams are coming off heartbreaking losses. In fact, Kansas is coming off back-to-back -back heartbreaking losses, 23-17 to Illinois, 23-20 to UNLV. I enjoyed both of them because I was on the other side of both of them. And the reason these losses were particularly heartbreaking for Kansas is they outgained their opponents in both games. In the Illinois game, they outgained them 327 to 271 against UNLV, 352 to 267. So they significantly outgained UNLV at the uh, in that game look at the turnovers turn the ball over four times against Illinois to one uh, as far as turnovers forced against UNLV two to zero it's not so much that Illinois and UNLV beat Kansas Kansas beat themselves in back-to-back -back games can't stop turning the ball over Jalen Daniels is struggling now if you look at Kansas offensive metrics on the year the rushing numbers look great 24th in yards per carry 12th in success rate fifth in effective rush passing numbers are way down 115th in yards per pass attempt. 48th in success rate is pretty good. 85th in effective pass. Look at Jalen Daniels' numbers the last two weeks. I mean, this is not what we expected here. 53.6% completions, 5.25 yards per attempt, two touchdowns to five interceptions. And we have to start asking ourselves, does this offense just not work without Kotelnicki? Keep in mind, he's gone. He's at Penn State now. Jeff Grimes is now coaching the offense and clearly it hasn't been working. I mean, this isn't going as planned for Kansas. Uh, now, one thing I do have to give to Kansas here, if you watched our preseason Kansas preview video, I said I had concerns about Kansas offense. I was worried about Kotelnicki being gone. That's what I said my first concern was. But my second concern was the offensive line. They lost three starters, the entire left side and the center. Two of those players, two of those offensive linemen that they lost were all conference. So I was concerned about the offensive line. But the thing is, this Kansas offensive line has actually played really well. They're second in run blocking grade, seventh in line yards, sixth in stuff rate. Look at their numbers in pass protection. They've done a great job keeping Jalen Daniels safe in the pocket, which is another thing. Jalen Daniels, you might be thinking, oh, He's throwing a bunch of interceptions. Maybe he's taking a lot of pressure in the pocket. Not at all. He's actually been pressured on just 17.7% .7 of his dropbacks this year. That's 133rd of 139 qualified quarterbacks in the FBS. So actually, it's the complete opposite. He's had one of the best pass protections in the FBS in front of him so far this season, still throwing interceptions. But I do have some good news for Kansas fans and for Jalen Daniels. They now play West Virginia, and they can't seem to stop anybody that throws the football. Look at their pass defense numbers here. 130th in yards per pass attempt allowed, 105th in success rate, 118th in effective pass. This West Virginia defense got cooked through the air last week in Pittsburgh. Eli Holstein, who, by the way, wasn't even supposed to be the starter entering the season. 21 of 30, 301 yards, three touchdowns, no picks, a passer rating above 187. Earlier in the season, they played Penn State at home. Drew Aller only dropped back to pass 17 times in the entire game, still threw for 216 yards, three touchdowns, and a 229.7 passer rating. I don't know how we can have any faith in the West Virginia pass defense right now. I thought it would be a lot better than this, and you know what? It is early in the season, but if there was ever a spot for Jalen Daniels to hop out, snap out of the slump in a big game, it's on the road here in Morgantown. Now, if we bring those West Virginia defensive metrics back up on the screen here, you might look at these and say, well, Kyle, West Virginia's been good against the run, though. And yeah, on paper, they have 67 sixth in yards per carry allowed, 44th in success rate, 51st in effective rush. I suppose that's not bad looking, but they've only played one team that runs the ball and it was Penn State. They did whatever they wanted. 42 carries, 222 yards, 5.3 yards per carry. We can poke holes in Jalen Daniels, but that Kansas rushing attack is elite. Probably every bit as elite as Penn State, maybe a small step down. So we saw Penn State come into Morgantown and average 5.3 yards per carry. I think we're going to see Kansas do the same exact thing. I think they're going to be able to run the ball. And I actually think Jalen Daniels could potentially have a good game. I know that sounds kind of crazy based on what we've seen, but I think Jalen Daniels can bounce back here. Now, what about the other side? What about the West Virginia offense? Well, it's, it's kind of tough 
to take these numbers seriously because the Penn State game just skewed them in a crazy way. They couldn't do anything against Penn State, and it's only been three games, so it's making the rest of their numbers, it's skewing it pretty bad. They're 106 in yards per play, 98th in yards per carry, 90th in yards per pass attempt. We know this West Virginia offense isn't this bad, which is why if you look at some schedule adjusted metrics, effective rush, they're 20th, effective pass, they're 57th, OFEI, they're 35th. So yeah, their raw stats don't look great because they couldn't do anything against Penn State, but we know this offense is pretty powerful. I'm a little concerned with what I saw in the Pittsburgh game last week. I had West Virginia money line in the game. It was one of my favorite bets of the week. Obviously, heartbreaker. They blew a 10-point lead in the last few minutes. Wow. That, oh my God. I don't even want to talk about that Saturday, actually. Uh, but yeah, I had West Virginia money line against Pitt. They lost. Um, but what I'm concerned about, just 4.2 yards per carry. And this is a Pitt defensive front that lost all four starters on the defensive line from last year. They also lost their D-line coach. So I was pretty certain West Virginia was going to be able to run the ball and pit in that game. And they did a little bit. It's not like they got shut down. But 4.2 yards per carry isn't great. That concerns me a little bit. And based on years past, you might say, Kyle, who cares they're playing Kansas? Kansas never plays any defense. And if it was any other season besides this one, you'd be correct on that. But Kansas is playing some defense, man. They're 22nd in the country in yards per play allowed, 34th in yards per carry allowed. And that's what we need to look at here, the run defense, because that's basically all West Virginia does. 34th in yards per carry, 54th in run defense success rate, 44th in effective rush. They've actually done a solid job against the run. They just played UNLV, who has one of the most dynamic rushing attacks in the country, 47 carries, 181 yards, 3.9 yards per carry. So they did a solid defensive job against UNLV's rushing attack. And if you watch that game, you know that a lot of UNLV's rushing yards was the quarterback making magic, man. He made some plays. Sluka, he made some plays uh, with his legs. Now, Garrett Green can also do that. But I think even these numbers are a little misleading. I think Kansas defense was even better than this against the run. Now, this game was at home. West Virginia definitely has more offensive talent top to bottom. But don't sleep on this UNLV rushing attack and don't sleep on this Kansas defense. I think they're able to at least hold West Virginia's rushing attack in check, which is why can't believe I'm saying this after the last two weeks. I faded them both times. I think this Kansas team is still a little bit overvalued, but I think it's a bounce back. This West Virginia defense looks so bad. I think Jalen Daniels is going to make some plays through the air. I like Kansas in this one. I think they win outright. Kansas plus two and a half. Might even consider glancing at the money line here. I see a plus 115. I might take, I haven't bet this yet, but I'm going to bet it right after this video. I'm going to take Kansas in this one. If you want to see all the bets I currently have open, head over to kylekerms.com and click on open bets. Um, and you'll see Kansas on there because it's not on there right now. But as soon as I'm done recording this, I'm going to bet Kansas. Um, so go to kylekerms.com, click on open bets. You'll see all mine as well as everyone on the staff here. Also, if you sign up for Sauce Network Plus, it comes with access to the Discord. And you can participate in the weekly betting league. $150 and one of these trophies go to the winner every single week. So if you're interested, head over to the website and sign up. Live show. College football live show, Saturday morning, 10 a.m. up to kickoff. We'll be live for two straight hours going through every single game, or I think we have 29 lined up, so we'll go through as many as we can. NFL show, 11 a.m. up to kickoff on Sunday mornings. If you're able to make it, we'd love to see you in the comments. Let's have ourselves a better week four, man. Week three crushed me. Need to bounce back. Remember to bet responsibly, and I'll talk to you in the Discord.